today's video is featuring the quilt shop from the Collectible Christmas Holiday Village. It is made exactly the same as all the other houses. So if you have questions on how to create the quilt shop, go ahead and visit our YouTube channel and watch the tutorial for the church. The one big thing that is different, however, is this beautiful barn style roof. We're going to stitch that together today and I'm going to show you the little bit of differences between this roof and all of the other roofs that we have done so far. Most of them have a single peak and this one has three. So we're going to have fun doing that today. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our roof fabrics before we get started with any of the embroidery. So we're going to come over here to our little pressing board. And this is the only house where we are sending fusible backing. This roof has a little bit of dark pieces on the edge and then that light piece in the middle. And we wanna make sure that we don't see that dark shadowing. So we're gonna take our fusible backing and we're gonna cut it pretty close to the same size. And then we're gonna take our iron and press that on nice and flat until it stays. This way we can make sure that we don't get that shadowing from the dark fabric being under that light fabric. Now the rest of the house pieces, we don't usually recommend fusible backing because we want to avoid extra bulk, especially when we're doing all that turning to make sure that they look cute and beautiful. Okay, once that fusible backing is applied, we're gonna just set that aside with our other fabric and then we're gonna take the roof eaves fabric now these pieces, we need to starch and fold over about a half inch on one long side of each of the pieces. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna take our favorite starch, whichever one you prefer, and we're gonna starch the whole piece of fabric. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press it flat so we can start getting that starch working into that fabric. We're gonna iron it back and forth until it's about three quarters dry. Then we're gonna take that half inch and fold it over. And we're gonna finish ironing it with that in place and make sure that it's all nice and flat. And once we're done with this one, we're gonna repeat this process with the second side. So once those are all nice and pressed and starched with that one side folded over, we can set them aside as well until we come to that part of the project. Once all of our materials are prepped, we're gonna hoop our light mesh cutaway stabilizer and we're gonna put it into the machine and do machine step one, which is stitching the placement line for the shape form. Now, again, I have used a gray thread for this step, but when you're doing yours at home, feel free to just use a light colored thread. I wanna make sure though that you can see what I'm doing for this video. All right, now that we've stitched that placement line, we're going to take our shape form interfacing and we're going to place it completely covering that placement line and tape it in place. This keeps it from moving while it's in the embroidery machine. And then I'm gonna put it back in the machine for machine step two and stitch that tack down line and scoring guides. All right, now that we have that tack down line and the scoring guide stitched, we're going to remove the tape and then we will trim away the stabilizer on the outside of that tack down line, being careful not to clip any of the stitches. We're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna make sure that we cut close to that stitch line. Now that we have finished trimming around the edges of our shape form, we're going to cut those scoring guides. So we're gonna take our ruler and our rotary cutter and we're gonna line everything up. And again, I like to stand when I do this. I just do a little bit better job if I'm standing when I cut this. So I'm gonna stand up, make sure I have everything lined up and then I'm gonna cut all the way through the shape form and stabilizer, moving a little bit past into the stabilizer so that it has a little bit of a, about a half an inch on each of either side. We're gonna do the next one. And then this one has a third one. So we're gonna do that one as well. And what these do is they help us make sure that when we bend the roof, they bend the way that we want them to. And now that we have our scoring guides 
cut and our shape form trimmed, we're gonna return it back to the machine and stitch the placement line for the fabric. I'm going to leave my gray thread in the machine because I want you to see where this placement line is going to B. It is a little bit different than the rest of the houses. Instead of having one piece of fabric that you put down, this roof is pieced in three different pieces of fabric. So I'm going to make sure that you can see that really clearly today. Okay, so what we just stitched for machine step four were those roof ends placement lines. And they're called that because we have one stitched right here on this end and one stitched right here on this end. And we're gonna leave that middle section alone for the moment. So we're gonna take our roof ends fabric and we're going to place them over that placement line, making sure that they're completely covered and we're gonna tape that. You wanna make sure that these are going to stay nice and secure one thing that helps these roof ends fabrics is when you make sure that they're starched really good so that they don't move or wanna go anywhere. But I still like to make sure I put enough tape there that makes sure that they stay where I want them to. And then after that, we're gonna return it to the machine and stitch the tack down line. I am gonna change my thread color this time so that you can have the right thread on this roof. Now that I've changed my thread to our brown color and have the roof ends taped in place, we're gonna return it to the machine for machine step four which is the tack down line for these ends. Okay, after we've stitched that tack down line, we're going to remove the tape and we're gonna do a little bit of trimming. Now we wanna make sure that we trim exactly as the instructions tell you because we're not gonna actually trim all the way around these pieces of fabric. We're only gonna trim in the middle. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna trim along this line here in the middle and along this line here, but we're gonna leave the rest of this fabric in place. So we'll take our scissors, pull it nice and taut and trim. Now we wanna trim close to the stitch line, being careful not to cut any of the stitches. And we're gonna twirl our hoop around so that we keep ourselves cutting on the same side. We're gonna trim this side as well. And then at this point, we're gonna stop trimming. That's all we're gonna do. Now that we've trimmed out the middle of our roof ends, we're going to return it to the machine so that we can stitch the very center of our roof placement line. Now that we have stitched our placement line for the center pieces of our fabric, we're gonna look at it for just a second. They have these little scalloped edges and that's okay that they're on the two roof ends. We're not gonna see it. We are, however, going to take our piece of fabric that we put the fusible backing on and we're gonna place it completely covering that placement line and we're gonna tape it so that it doesn't move on us when it's in the machine. And once we have it taped securely in place, we're gonna return it to the machine and stitch its tack down line. All right, and we're gonna leave our thread the same color. Now that we have stitched the roof detail tack down line, which is that middle section of fabric, we're going to trim. However, we're not gonna trim all the way around the fabric. We're just gonna trim along these scalloped edges. For this, I like to use the Kimber Bell little snippy scissors because I wanna make sure I can get into each and every one of those scallop details. We're just gonna clip in and make sure that we clip into each of these scallop details and we're gonna leave both of these sides alone. After we've trimmed all these cute little scallops, we're gonna return the hoop to the machine to stitch the roof detail and satin outline. This is machine step seven. All 
All right, look at this super pretty detail. I love how the scalp has the satin stitch and then even those fold lines add to the beauty of this roof. So now that we have everything stitched here, we get to do the fun part. And we're going to place those roof eaves fabrics, one on top of the other in the center, making sure that those half inch folds are right on top of the other. And we're gonna make sure we cover that entire project. And then we're going to make sure we tape this exactly as shown in the instructions. Okay, so we're gonna put a piece of tape here on the end and a piece of tape here on the end. And then we're going to take tape and make sure that we cover those folds so that it doesn't get caught by the presser foot. That is something we don't want happening because if it catches, then the whole project can pop out of the hoop. So we're gonna make sure that we're all taped nice and good. And then we're gonna return it to the machine for machine step nine, which is stitching that final outline stitch. All right, we're finished with the embroidery part. So now we just need to remove the tape and then we'll take our project out of our hoop. We'll just pull that off. Now that we've removed the tape, we're going to take the project out of our hoop and then we're going to trim around the project. We're gonna stay about a quarter inch away from the final stitch outline and make sure that we don't clip any of the stitches. So I like to do this with my scissors, but if you'd like to use a rotary cutter, that is absolutely fine. So we'll just cut around about that quarter inch mark and then because we're going to have those nice corners on our roof, we're gonna cut in a little bit closer to those corners. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut straight across, being careful not to cut any of those stitch lines, and then about an inch on either side to create a really nice sharp point. We're gonna do that on all four corners so that they can all look really nice and crisp. All right, and once we have the trimming done, we get to do my favorite part, which is turning the roof. All right, so to turn the roof, we're gonna make sure that we put two fingers on the inside of that first eave and our thumbs on the corners. We're gonna push on those corners and flip the roof, just like that. Then we're gonna do the same thing on that second side. Fingers in, thumbs on corners, and flip. Ta-da, it's my favorite. All right, then we're gonna take our point turner and we're gonna come in here and gently massage out those corners to make sure that they look nice and crisp and pretty. All right, and then after this, we're gonna starch these folds and get this roof looking really good. Go ahead and use whichever starch you like the best. We all have our favorites and starch them really well. And then I like to take my iron and I like to pull this first eave, the one that's underneath the top one and get it nice and taut so that it lays beautiful on the other side. And I just take my iron and go from the outside toward the middle so that I can starch it really nice and well. All right, and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing to the eave on top. Pull it nice and tight towards the center and starch from the side towards the middle. This helps keep our roof looking really nice on the underside. And once I have it all nice and starched, I'm gonna take my iron and just kind of go down the center until it's fully dry. This is looking really good. And that's how it looks. Because this roof is made out of fabric and not glitter, we're going to make sure that we iron these seams really good so that they can help us create that shape. So on the folds, we're gonna just bend the fold a little bit. We're gonna take our iron and we're gonna press down really good. 
on that seam, flip it over and press the next seam. And that's gonna start that crease that we want. And then we're gonna do the next one. Fold it in half so that the stitch line is right in the center. And we're gonna press down, flip it over and press that next side. And then we're gonna do the third one. Make sure that these are all laying flat when we do this. Again, put the stitches right in the center as best you can and then press. Flip it over and press again. And if you look, it's gonna start that shape. And then I like to come through and just kind of make sure my eaves are gonna do what I want them to now that I've kind of moved them all around. But I already have that pressed in there. Okay, so we're gonna take our front and our back, which I've already stitched for you, and we're gonna give them a little pop. Take one of the sides and push it through, and then let the other one follow and flip it straight over, just like that. Now this looks like it needs a little ironing, so we're gonna give it a quick little press and then we'll show you how to attach the roof. Okay, so I've taken the time to make sure that my house looks nice and straight by pressing all of the sides and the corners really well. So now we get to glue on the roof. Same story as before, we're gonna take our favorite glue and we're gonna put glue all along the edges and then we'll hold our roof in place. So we'll go ahead and squeeze out a little bit of glue all along these edges. Making sure that we have enough to stick on but we don't go overboard with the glue either. We'll go along the sides and then up the other side. We just wanna make sure that we have enough glue to keep that roof in place the way we want it to be so that it lays nice and good for us. Along that edge and we're good to go. Okay, we're gonna make sure that the eave on top is facing the front and the eave on bottom is facing the back. And we're going to just make sure we line everything up. I like to line the center one first and then follow with all the others. And then we can hold it in place like that. Once your roof is dry, then you're all done and your quilt shop looks so cute, I am sure. Thank you so much for joining me today for this mini tutorial about the quilt shop. We hope that we answered some of your questions about this roof that's a little bit different and that you'll feel more confident in making it. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Feel free to go enjoy some well-deserved me time.